Hey guys, today in this video we will discuss all about CSFB. We will see what all preconditions should be there for a CSFB call to take place and also we will look into actual CSFB call flow. We will refer to UE logs whenever needed. Let's start this video with a very basic question. What are the solutions available in LTE for CS voice call? As we know, there is no CS domain present in LTE. So to make a voice call, there are mainly two solutions available. One solution is CSFB means circuit switched fallback. In short, CSFB is a procedure in which LT network redirects UE to a legacy 3G or 2G network to complete the voice call. Second solution is IMS based Volte call. In Volte, UE remains in LTE and complete the voice call. But Whenever you is not able to make wall take call because of some reason, such as you is not capable or network does not support Volte, CSFB will take place to complete the voice call. When you is in LTE RAT, it should be registered with MSC also to complete any MT or MO voice call. As mobile cannot directly communicate with MSC, Registration of UE with MSC is done by MME on behalf of UE. To perform this registration with MSC and other tasks related to CS domain, MME is connected to MSC via SGS interface. Let's understand this SGS interface in detail. This figure shows how MME is integrated with legacy 3G and 2G system to support CSFB. Main thing to notice here is SGS interface. SGS interface connect MSC present in 3G or 2G network to MME present in LTE. Interestingly, SGS is an extension of already known GS interface between SGSN and MSC. So it is not an entirely new interface. This figure shows protocol stack of SGS interface. Below are the main functionalities of SGS interface. Number one, MSC transfers paging messages related to MTCS call and MTSMS to MME over SGS interface. Number two, MME transfers location area update of an UE to MSC over SGS interface. Whenever UE sends combined tracking area and location area update, MME updates the current location area of UE to MSC. Number three, MME and MSC exchange MO or MT SMSs over SGS interface. For MO or MT SMS, there is no need of CSFP. UE remains in LTE network and MME exchanges SMSs with MSC over SGS interface. There has to be an association between MME and MSC over SGS interface before these two entities can exchange any type of information or data related to an UE over SGS interface. MME and MSC association is created at following occasions. During combined APS and MC attach and during combined tracking area and location area update. Remember, this association is updated whenever UE changes MME. We will go through the combined EPS and MC attach procedure and see how SGS association is created during this procedure. During attach procedure, to register itself to the CS domain, mobile should send I attach type as combined EPS and MC attach in attach request message. Here, EPS refers to PS domain and MC refers to CS domain. This is attach request message from UE logs. Here you can see attach type is combined EPS and MC attach. UE will send attach type as combined EPS and MC attach only when it is CSFB capable. If UE is not CSFB capable but it can send and receive SMSs, then it can send one optional IE called additional update type in attach request message and set value of this IE as SMS only. I cannot show this I to you here in this message because it is an optional I 
and this UE is not sending this I. Interestingly, at this moment, UE does not know anything about network's capability related to CSFB. It may happen that network does not support CSFB, but it supports SMS. In this case, network will add one optional I called additional update type and attach accept message and set value of this I as SMS only. In this case, although UE is registered to CS domain, but it can exchange only SMS. No voice call facility will be available. MME maintains one mapping table between tracking areas and location areas. Location areas are further mapped to MSC or VLR that are serving those location areas. So if MME knows tracking area of a mobile, it can easily detect MSC or VLR corresponding to that tracking area. MME refers to this table to find MSC that is managing location area in which UE is present currently. Remember one important point. An UE attached to LTE domain cannot decipher its LAI on its own. LAI means location area identity. It can only decode tracking area. Mapping between tracking area and location area is done by MME. LAI to an UE is always allocated by MME. Then, MME uses SGS interface to send message location update request to the MSC found in the above step. After getting location update request message, MSC comes to know that UE is attached to LTE network and to which MME it is connected in LTE network. MSC may assign one temporary identifier TIMC to the UE and send this identifier to MME in location update accept message. But remember, assignment of TIMC to UE by VLR is optional. Moreover, MC is the mandatory I in almost all the messages over SGS interface, so it is optional to allocate TIMC to the UE. MME sends this optional TIMC and updated location area identity to UE in attach accept message. This is the attach accept message from UE logs. Value of I attach result is combined EPS and MC attach. It means UE has been successfully attached to the both PS and CS domain. This is location area identity. Here is the TIMC that was allocated by MSC to UE. You can notice there is no SMS only indication included by network, so this UE can avail both SMS and voice call services. Remember, it is mandatory for both network and UE to support SMS when they support voice call. I will now discuss combined tracking area update, as it is almost similar to initial UE attached procedure. At the time of combined tracking area and location area update also, same procedure takes place and SGS association is either created or updated. Till now we learned what are the preconditions that should be there to make CSFB call successful. Let's now see actual CSFB call flow. Paging request. VLR sends paging request to MME over SGS interface for empty voice call. UE is identified by either TIMC or MC on these paging messages. If UE is in idle mode, MME sends paging messages to the UE. UE identity on these paging messages is STMC or MC. If UE is in connected mode, MME reuses the existing connection to send Minas message CS service notification to the UE. In this UE log, UE is in connected mode. So here you can see NAS message CS service notification sent by MME. Here, STMC is being used as paging identity. CLI field tells identity of the calling party. UE may decide to reject MT voice call based on the identity of the calling party. Service request. This message is sent from MME to MSC as a response to the previously received paging request message. It is kind of intimation to MSC that MME can reach UE and MME will work on the paging received from MSC. So MSC should stop sending any further paging. 
MME sends this message to MSC only when there exists a NAS signaling connection between UE and MME. So, when UE is in connected mode, MME immediately sends back this message after getting paging request from MSC. But if UE is in idle mode, MME first creates signaling connection with this UE by sending paging messages to this UE and then sends back service request to MSC once signaling connection is established with UE. Extended service request. After getting CS paging or CS service notification message from MME, UE sends this message as an acknowledgement for CSFP. Remember, this message is also sent by UE when UE wants to initiate a MOCS call. This is extended service request message. Here you can see service type is MTCSFP. UE identifies itself by MTMC in this message. MTMC is a part of QD. CSFP response is accepted by UE, so it is a kind of positive acknowledgement from UE. UE context modification request. MME sends UE context modification request message to eNode B. This message indicates to eNode B that UE should be moved to 3G or 2G RAT. This message contains CS fallback indicator and UE's location area identity also. The PLMN for CS domain is identified by PLMN ID included in the location area identity. Enode B replies with S1 API UE contacts modification response message to MME. Now, next task for Enode B is to redirect UE to 3G or 2G RAT. There are mainly three procedures defined for this purpose. Number one, inter RAT cell change order to 2G. Remember, this procedure is applicable only when target read is 2G. Number two, inter at PS handover from 4G to 3G or 2G. It is up to network whether to use this method or not. Number three, RRC connection release with redirection. In this procedure, eNodeB releases UE's connection in LT RAT and includes information about target RAT 3G or 2G in RRC connection release message. In my experience, this is the most widely used method even in UE logs that I am having now. This procedure is being used. Here is the RSC connection release message with redirection information. You can see under redirected career info eNode B has included information about frequency band and target carrier frequencies of G or N. This means eNode B is redirecting this UE to 2G RAT. Now UE knows what is the target rat and what are the carrier frequencies in the target rat to measure. Next task for UE is to find a suitable cell by using all these parameters and establish a radio signaling connection in that cell. Paging response message. Once signaling connection in target cell is created, UE responds to the paging by sending a paging response message in 2G. I will not go through content of this message as this is the same paging response message that we already have in 2G domain. GPRS suspension request. This is something important guys. If the target red is GRN and dual transfer mode is not supported by UE or network, the UE starts the suspension procedure for data flow by sending GPRS suspension request message to BSC. BSC forwards this message to SGSN. This message triggers the serving SGSN to send a suspend request message to the MME identified by RAI and TLLI. RAI means routing area identification and TLLI means temporary logical link identity. MME suspends data flow and returns positive acknowledgement to SGSN. Let's see content of GPRS suspension request message from UE logs. This is the temporary logical link identity sent by UE. This is routing area identification sent by UE. Both are used to identify 
a MME to which SGSN can send suspend request. Here UE has mentioned suspension cause as DTM not supported in the cell. Remember, if target red is 3G, there will be no suspension of data flow. In this case, serving gateway will forward the data to SGSN so that SGSN can send this data to UE in 3G red. After this, UE will follow the normal call procedure in 2G. Once voice call is complete, existing mechanisms can be used to move the UE to EU train. No CS fallback specific mechanisms are specified by specifications. Here I will list down just few possible scenarios that I think can take place once voice call is complete in legacy RAT. If target RAT is 2G, one possibility is that UE resumes the data flow once CS call is over and remains in 2G until data transfer is complete. Once data transfer is complete, UE can make cell reselection to some 4G cell. Other possibility is that UE directly goes back to 4G RAT without resuming the data flow. In case of 3G RAT, UE can either wait for data transfer to complete before making a cell reselection to 4G cell or can go to 4G cell during ongoing data flow. It's up to UE implementation. One more possibility is this. After completion of voice call, network can send RSC connection release message to UE with redirection to LTE cell. Network will do so when it wants UE to go for G cell as soon as voice call is complete. In this case, UE has to go to LTE cell regardless of the PS data call. If you want to go into greater depth of CSFB call flow and SGS interface, here is the needed information. 3GPP specification 23.272 is the one-stop solution for CSFP. And 3GPP specification 29.118 has all the information about SGS interface. That's all for today guys. Hope you would have got a better understanding of CSFP now. Please share and like this video if you think it was useful. Currently, I'm working on my next video that would be on career aggregation. Subscribe to this channel and till then, keep waiting, guys. Bye.